Hey Star Wars fans, this is a Star Wars Community Challenge. This challenge is open to everybody. If you make videos, make a video. If you're a commenter, make a comment. If you don't do anything, sit at home and think about it. But if you're a Star Wars fan, you're welcome to take part. So the challenge is, Star Wars 1986, what would you have done? So let me elaborate. We all know the vintage Star Wars line ended in 1985 with the last 17 figures. But let's just say you work for Kenner and you've seen the pitch for the 1986 line. The pitch that involved made up characters, Mongo Beefhead, various droid kit bashes, weird attacks with guns sticking out the back. And you scoffed at the idea. So your boss says, all right then, let's see what you can do. You think you're so clever, you give me the pitch for the 1986 line. And that is the challenge. So what are you going to do? You need figures, you need core characters, you need droids, you need aliens, you need spaceships, you need playsets, creatures, whatever you want, it's entirely up to you. And to get the ball rolling, this is what I would have done. So for the figures, I decided... 17 is a good number, I'll make my own last 17. Now every single Star Wars line up to that point featured at least one Luke Skywalker, usually two or three. But I'm going to go with one. And there's not a lot of options left. Luke Ceremonial? I don't think so. The one Luke Skywalker I think we were missing back in the day was Dagobah Luke. We had the Dagobah playset, we had Yoda, we even had the training backpack, but we never got a decent Dagobah Luke. We had to pretend the best bin one was the Dagobah fatigues, but we all know it wasn't. So that would be my first choice. Dagobah Luke comes with a blue lightsaber, just like the one that came with the Jedi Luke Skywalker. And the usual blaster doesn't need anything else. We've already got the backpack, we've already got Yoda. So that would be my Luke Skywalker. So what about Han Solo? Every line needs a Han Solo, and to my mind, there was only one Han Solo we were ever robbed of. Han Solo in Stormtrooper disguise. Such an easy figure to do, they'd already made the head with the small head Han, they'd already made the body with the Luke in Stormtrooper disguise. Stick the head on the body, there you go, Han Solo, Stormtrooper disguise. And in my mind, that would have been one of the coolest figures they could have ever made. So what about Princess Leia then? Princess Leia did pretty well as an action figure. She got quite a few different versions. But there's one version that we kind of all wanted, but we never got. And that is Princess Leia as Jabba's slave. Maybe it was too risky for the time. Maybe it would have sold by the million. Who knows? But in my line, Slave Leia. So what about the bad guys? Well, the Imperial, most conspicuous by his absence, in 1978, Grand Moff Tarkin. Some may argue a boring figure, others may argue a missed opportunity. I've always wanted one, so I'm going to put one in. Grand Moff Tarkin. Okay then, so what about troops? Every good Star Wars line needs an Imperial troop. And I was a bit stuck on this one. I was racking my brains for ages, and then it struck me. We never got a Sand Trooper. Yeah, we could pretend that our Storm Troopers were Sand Troopers, but they weren't really. So in my line, we're going to have a Sand Trooper. And he's going to be the one with the orange pauldron, because he looks the coolest. He needs to come with a backpack. He needs to come with a big rifle. The only thing he probably wouldn't be is weathered, because 1986, we weren't really at weathering stages yet. And for the main bad guy in my Star Wars line, a figure that was so good, they arrogantly only ever released once. But I think they could have done better. I want... Darth Vader with a removable helmet, with a lightsaber that isn't stuffed up his arm, and he also comes with a cloth cape, just like the one that General Lando did. So what about droids? Every good Star Wars line needs droids. Now, I actually got a bit stuck here, because they did pretty well with droids. There's a lot of them out there, but we don't know the names. They didn't really do anything. But I managed to pick three. And the first one is the R1 series droid. Now, most of you know, I cannot stand FX7. And looking at the R1 droid, he's going to be pretty much the same kind of static background character. But this guy looks so much better, I'm quite happy to have him here. Next up, a simple repaint. 
just because I was getting stuck for ideas. R5A2. The little orange capped R5 droid that we see in Mos Eisley for about a second. And my final droid, I actually had to look up the name of these. He's called R3A2. And he's one of the little clear dome droids from the Empire Strikes Back. And I picked him just because we never got a clear dome droid. It would have been a simple remold of an R2-D2. But they never bothered, so I'm going to stick one in. Why was there never a Borshek made? The coolest character in the cantina. He even had a major part to play because if he wasn't there then they would never have met Han and Chewie. But no figure. So we're going to put that right. Borshek. He's known now as Dr. Everzan. But the he doesn't like you guy. He had a main action scene, and it was the first time we ever saw anything be killed by a Jedi. And my final one from the cantina scene, well he's just outside the cantina, is Garindan, or Long Snoot. I always thought this guy looked really good, and I never understood why he was never made as a figure. I can even picture what a vintage one would look like, so he's definitely going in there. And my final alien, she had a major action scene in Return of the Jedi, and it's bewildering as to why they never made her as a figure. And that is Ula. Jabba's dancing girl that gets sent to the Rancor. And for the last few figures, I thought we'd pick some rebels. Now, one rebel commander that I never understood why they didn't make from Hoth, General Riakin. Considering just how many Hoth figures they did make in Empire Strikes Back, I have no idea why they didn't make General Riakin as well. But I wish they did, so he's in. Now, the next one is a real missed opportunity. From the very first scenes in the very first movie. An army builder. And they didn't make him. Who am I talking about? The Rebel Fleet Trooper. Imagine how many of these would have sold back in 78. The only Rebel army builder in the original film. If you don't count Luke in his X-Wing gear. So we're putting that right. Rebel Fleet Trooper is going in there. And for my final figure choice. A Rebel Hero. A Rebel Hero that survived every battle from every film. The one and only Mr. Wedge Antilles. Now we could just make him a simple repaint of the original Luke Skywalker in X-Wing gear. But this is 1986 and we're going to be innovative. So we're going to make him with a removable helmet. So that is my final figure. Wedge Antilles with a removable X-Wing pilot helmet. Okay, so what about creatures? Every good Star Wars line needs creatures. So at first this was going to be a figure choice, but I decided he's probably too big to be a figure, so we'll make him a small creature. And that is Effant Mon, Jabba's head of security. He's so weird looking but cool, he's got to be in there. And the next one is a creature pack. Very, very similar to the Sai Snootles and the Rebo Band pack, which some people will bark at, but I think they should have made it. And that is the Cantina Band. Five figures, almost identical, with a few weapons. What's so hard about that? It's the kind of set that if that scene had been in Return of the Jedi, we would have guaranteed got it. But because it was in the first film, it was a little too out there. So we're going to put that right, and we're going to have the Cantina Band. Now there's one final creature that I would have liked to have seen, and that is a Bantha. Now it could have had real fur, it could have been sculpted. It would have probably had a trapdoor on its back so you could stick the figure in. That's fine. But we definitely missed out not getting a Bantha. And seeing as I'm marketing these sets, I would have thrown in a free Tusken Raider. What about mini rigs? Now, mini rigs are really difficult. There's not many things in the Star Wars universe that they didn't actually do that would have been worth doing. But there's one that I can think of that they did miss. And that's the little rebel transport car thing that we saw in the hangar in the Battle of Yavin. And to make it worthwhile, we'll chuck in a few pilot accessories and that little cool ladder that went on the side of the X-Wing. Speaking of accessories, nearly every toy line in the 80s came with these, but Star Wars didn't. And that's a weapons pack. A pack, a couple of packs, full of blasters. All the blasters that you'd lost over the last seven years. But I would have done them in exactly the same colours that they were done originally. Think how easy our lives would be now if someone had done that. Loads of Stormtrooper blasters, loads of those annoying little fiddly blasters that always get lost. Okay, so what about vehicles? Now if you look at the vintage Star Wars line, original trilogy vehicles, they actually did pretty well. There's not many that they didn't do. But there is one glaring omission, and that is the TIE Bomber. We'd had TIE Fighters, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, the TIE Interceptor, but not a TIE Bomber. It would have been really easy to do, so we're going to do a TIE Bomber. 
We're going to throw in a TIE Pilot for free as well. So as there aren't many more vehicles you could do, yes, we'd all love a Star Destroyer and we'd all love the Tantive IV, but it's not very realistic. There was apparently going to be the Tantive IV, but if you look at what they were planning, it was so small it would have been pathetic. So what I would have done is I would have re-released some of the vehicles that came earlier. Not all of them, just the main ones. We should have had another X-Wing fighter, but let's make it one with an Astromech socket so you can plug in your own droid. And we should have had another TIE fighter, but let's make it grey like it was supposed to be. And what about the land speeder? The land speeder came out so early, but if you were like me and missed the beginning of Star Wars, then you had no chance of getting one of them. So it would have been nice to have seen that reissued as well. And finally we come to play sets. The thing that every toy company is terrified of making nowadays. But this is 1986. And in 1986 it was a competition to see who could make the biggest, coolest play sets. So, for the small play set, one I can understand why they didn't make it in the first place. The Endor Bunker. It didn't need to be complicated. Just that little bit of bunker with the doors that open. Maybe a bit of plastic wooden scenery going around it. That would have been perfectly acceptable. And getting slightly bigger. A play set that they so desperately needed to make, but they never did. And that is the Cloud City Freezing Chamber. And I mean a proper plastic moulded carbon freezing chamber. With the circular platform with the freezing chamber. And the little steps that you could have your lightsaber jill with Darth Vader on. And seeing as it's a nice big play set, we're going to add lights to it. So it's got those little orange floor lights that we saw when Luke and Vader were duelling. And finally, one last play set. We're going to have the Sarlacc Pit. A round plastic base with the original Sarlacc creature in. With moving tentacles. A space in the mouth so you could throw your figures in. But not just a Sarlacc Pit. The Sarlacc Pit stands simply as the base. The base... For Jabba's sail barge. Now it doesn't have to be in scale as long as it's big. If they can make the USS flag for G.I. Joe, they can make the sail barge for Star Wars. As long as it's got a platform for a battle on the top with moving cannons and a side panel that comes off so you can put Jabba the Hutt and all his goons inside. Maybe even little windows that you can flick open and fire your figures into the Sarlacc pit. That would have done me. And combined with the Sarlacc Pit, that could have been the greatest playset of the 1980s. So there you have it guys, if I worked for Kenner, back in the 80s, that would have been my pitch. Now, it's over to you. Video responses, comments, blogs, whatever you want to do. This has been Luke, with the 1986, could have been, Vintage Star Wars line. Thanks for watching.